Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So in this video, we're going to cover uh, Chapter 3 of the IDA3 side quest. And they call it Volume 2. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but it's at the end of Chapter 2, you recall that Hismina declared war on this particular dream world and wants to end the mystery once and for all. If you also watched the end of part 2 or if you finished it yourself, uh, remember that a virtual being was looking for a child. And the Dream World Guide, which is the Beast Dog, says it is a child, but it gets rejected by this um, virtual being. And upon further investigation, we realize that the mother is looking for Mana, which is the free character that we get after finishing all four chapters. So again, like most story walkthroughs, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts about this particular chapter, as well as some of the boss strategies that does occur at the end of this chapter. Now if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. And again, I do apologize for the raspy voice, uh, still not feeling 100% better, so I was just slowly grinding through uh, the content that has been released this week. Anyways, um, after all that, we meet up with the IDEA team, and of course Iska, Claude, and Saki friend us uh, to join us as uh, virtual friends for the Lord of Mana game. And of course, uh, the Lord of Mana game is an integral part of this uh, particular side quest, where you will be grinding uh, both to complete uh, all four chapters, as well for, as for some of the side rewards as well. Now back to the story, unfortunately, uh, the dark apple that put people to sleep and warped them into a dream world seems to be having um, existed a lot longer uh, than the more recent IDA school happenings. We also delve into uh, the history uh, and the past of the IDA school and its link to an old orphanage. So again, with a lot of these uh, side quests, I do uh, enjoy the uh, conspiracy uh, as well as some of the mysteries and also tie-ins to some of the previous content. Again, let me know in the comments below how you're enjoying this uh, uh, particular side quest. I do find that because of the large amount of content, um, it definitely fills in some gaps that I did have in terms of questions regarding IDA 1 and 2. And of course, uh, getting playing uh, to play with Hismina in the virtual Lord of Mana is pretty good considering, you know, that many of us haven't pulled his meat at all. Now, uh, during this particular uh, side quest, we find out how awesome Iska really is, and she is hardcore in everything, even in a game. No wonder she's the leader of IDA, and she is so well accomplished. As we log back into Lord of Mana um, to continue the side quest, we also find out more details about Mana, as well as Mother. So mother is one of the keywords that we've been looking for in terms of solving the mystery. And again, as you uh, continue through this chapter, you'll find out more about the origins of mother, as well as uh, her significance in uh, both the Lord of Manic game, as well as the history of the orphanage itself. Now, I'm not sh sure if I'm the only one, uh, but I will say that um, if you ever watched Matrix, any fans of the Matrix movie series uh, will be able to relate to um, the operator. So, uh, of course, IDEA has its own operator, which does join us as a friend in the Chapter 2 for Lord of Mana. Anyways, if you've watched Matrix, you'll know that Trinity and Neo were so amazing. And of course, that uh, boosted um, Keanu Reed's career. Now, later on, we do find out about Hisamina and her family background. She has a lot of influence and uses it to speak to the administrator to find out more about the HMC orphanage and to find out more, of course, about both Mana and um, Mother. We then get authorization to speak to the administrator from that era where that orphanage actually operated. Now, the former administrator explains a lot of details about the dream worlds, how they occurred back in the day, and their link to the present day dream worlds. To be honest, the amount of information uh, in this particular chapter uh, was quite mind-blowing. Even Saki and Aldo thought so. Of course, Iska had things figured out way before this. 
Didn't I say earlier she was really hardcore? Man, I really need to pull her. If you do visit Reddit uh, and the subreddit for Another Eden, there are a ton of Iska uh, fans, especially one of the moderators as well. So once you get about halfway uh, to two thirds through this particular um, chapter, it's confirmed that the Dream World Beast is indeed a manifestation of Mana's consciousness. So we do have to capture them all in the Lord of Mana game and consolidate them uh, to kind of reform Mana's uh, consciousness into a whole person of sorts. We also find out why the game world is so close to Aldo's uh, experiences in both uh, present and in the past. Because if you uh, realize the developer, uh, being that she's from El Zion in the future, there's no way that she could program, uh, you know, Mutagan and some of the other um, kind of overworlds that Aldo experienced uh, back in the past. Now, finally, we get to try to offer all these parts of Mana's consciousness and negotiate with the uh, mother, which ends up being the entity uh, within the Lord of Mana game. And that seems to be the root of all the problems. Now, we find out that she is an AI developed for the former orphanage to take care of children, but she malfunctioned after something happened to Mana. Now, I'll leave the conclusion and some of the later details a secret, so feel free to watch through to the end of the video, um, you know, if you haven't already played through, uh, to see what's going on. Now, within the Lord of Mana game, there are more friends to recruit as you progress to chapter 3 and 4. You might already have a good team, so um, if you don't need to, uh, this is the optional, I guess. But however, you do get, I believe, around 24. 5 to 30 characters, so um, once I gather all the extra characters available after chapters 3 and 4, I'll have another video up for those. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you remember to collect the 30 game bugs within the Lord of Mana game. So they are spread out all over the Lord of Mana um, game in terms of the different areas, and they look like uh, kind of like uh, glitchy sparkles. Now you change them all in the developer's room on the fourth floor in the dorms. And again, once I have a video of all 30 locations, I will gather them up and I'll put them out for you. I do plan to level up and clear all the areas uh, in easily and then just film them all in one uh, go. Also, once you travel to the deserted village in the Lord of Mana game, so around level 20-ish or so, you can swap jobs to try uh, the other two jobs for all those. So you can actually use uh, the soldier or the archer if you choose to, since I'm using the sorcerer. Now be aware though that you do start at level one again. So uh, I don't recommend doing that unless you have a lot of free time because, you know, in the later stages, you won't really have time to grind him at level one all the way up, being that uh, the difficulty of the mobs uh, do rise as you progress through the Lord of Mana game. Now, at the end of this chapter, there is a final boss within the Lord of Mana game and I tried it once at level 10 and it wasn't uh, seeming to be doable being that uh, my team got wiped out. Now if you want to use a low level team, you can try using multiple sorcerers or healers uh, so that you heal every turn uh, with the attack and heal regen at the end of that turn. I would recommend farming um, you know, the different areas, doing your quests and leveling up your team. Now later on in this video, you can also feel free to watch the boss battle for strategy. Now in my case, I leveled everyone up to a level 15 and 16 team, and I do use Aldo, um, Hismina, Serene, and Saki. First of all, I started with uh, Aldo's Aurora Force move. Now it does have the same abilities, 50% type resistance. Uh, then I went with an all-out attack with Serene's 50% uh, self damage while doing 900 uh, attack power and I used it in conjunction with Saki's physical resist debuff um, special move. And I did win uh, in a few turns. So uh, keep that in mind if you do want to try it uh, at different stages, depending on how strong your team is. The boss does look like Sylph, and you might remember Sylph if you have been to Purgatory and taken on one of those uh, wind spirits. And all the moves seem to be uh, wind type attacks, including AoEs and single targets. Now, after the boss battle, we meet the real mana within uh, the Lord of Mana game. Or at least, uh, you know, the 
virtual version of the real man. But something goes wrong. I guess we'll have to finish chapter 4 to find out what happens and why this occurred. And of course, at the end of chapter 4, we'll get mana for real. Anyways, like most storyline videos, I'll let you watch the rest of the video in peace. Thanks for watching! We'll see you next time.